pulse processing and quality aspect of pulse, especially through the black gram and green gram. Currently focusing on novel value addition of rice and pulse milling by product through extrusion cooking and quality control. To his credit, he has published more than 75 research articles in various national, international journals and in peer-reviewed impact factor journals. He has been one of the members in Team Research Award given by the Indian Council of Agricultural Research Award for the year 2002. We are extremely fortunate to have you here amidst us today, sir. We welcome to you, welcome you and take go, and request you to take over the session and enlighten us, enlighten us on value chain management in food crops. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon and uh, thank you, Dean, Madam, and other uh, senior faculties. And uh, I'm one of the person from the same institute. So that is a thing which uh, I was very much proud. Uh, now I'm working in uh, National Institute of Food Technology and Entrepreneurship Management, Tanjavur. And uh, beyond uh, this, um, I'm also an uh, Vice President for All India Food Scientists and Technology Association of India. Apart from this, uh, as a scientific panel member for the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. And one of the 13 labs that has been selected for assessing the enzyme activity is enzyme activity in the wheat all over the world. So one of the lab is ours. So we are working on certain uh, crops, certain uh, products, and uh, the much, uh, I, I do not to talk on much on this one. The thing is that when we enter into certain institutions and uh, any department or where, wherever, so we have to focus on uh, not only for our growth, but also to the institutional growth. So whatever the contribution you are going to do will be either it will be recognized immediately, nor it will be kept in abeyance for some time, but it will be given a credit in the due course. So when I joined this institute, it was earlier Paddy Processing Research Center in Tanjau. We were only focusing on Paddy and Paddy milling and uh, power boiling systems, all things. So I learned what is the value chain of paddy. So from where it is being harvested, what are the types of paddy, how it is being harvested, and how it is being distributed to the public distribution system. So you know, India is the uh, largest producer of rice, but how it is being distributed to different states in a public distribution system. That is a very big challenge whole of uh, world is looking into it. So how we are going to distributing these things in a proper manner with the keeping in storage system, harvesting, immediately harvesting, how we save the paddy and after uh, harvesting and storing, how we process the paddy and how we deliver to the public distribution system. What are the storage systems all these are steps of value chain. So each and every uh, stages we were working on it. And not only that, one, byproducts. Rice milling byproducts are there. Husk is there. Everybody sees that husk is something, a uh, waste material. But when we see there are 95 different types of chemicals can be extracted. So that is the potential of this one. And now, uh, as uh, we come out of the ages and technologies, we were able to develop some silica enzymes and silica for solar cells. So whatever the things which we are doing, if it is burnt and how it has to be burnt, the system, these are all things and how to extract the silica from that. So silica, what is the value and how it can be included into our regular uh, usage. So one of the best use of what I have done with, uh, I have not done bigger thing, but I was only focusing on the village level uh, industries. So I first took our project on KVAC, Kadi and Village Industries, where they were procuring silica, which is produced from the sand burning with sodium hydroxide. So instead of that, we developed a system for using the husk ash and burning it, cooking it with the sodium bicarbonate and then extracting the sodium silicate 
which is used for the soap industries. So that is a bigger industries we have elaborated, we have proven that technologies. So that was given to the Kadian village. That was my project, first project. The second value chain is when we convert the paddy into rice, we get husk, bran, brokens, and whole rice. So whole rice, what is the percentage of whole rice that has to be uh, recovered from the paddy? Have you, do you know anybody else? What is the percentage of recovery of paddy? Rice, how much rice we have to get from 100 kg of paddy? You are all from food science background and yeah, yeah, everybody is from food. So, what is the percentage of rice we have to re recover from the paddy? Percent. Just to tell. Just tell me what is the percentage of husk in it? What is the percentage of bran in it? And if you remove that one, what is the percentage of rice? So polished rice. How much? Don't tell that. Rice. Don't tell that cinematic joke. One grain contains one rice, and if you give uh, one bag of paddy, we have to give one bag of rice. Okay. So this is we need. We have to recover. There are in India is having a different agroclimatic conditions and different varieties of paddy are there, and different varieties of paddy are consumed by the people, and different milling systems. So I we want to match that the first assignment, which uh, the next. Bigger assignment which I got is Food Corporation of India. They asked us to fix the OTR value, that is outturn ratio of the rice milling. So outturn ratio of the rice milling is how much quantity of paddy then, that is in 91, we were uh, producing around 102 million tons of paddy was produced. Now what is the production of uh, rice paddy? No idea. What is the production rate? Maybe around 122, 128 million tons. So 128 million tons out of this 20% will go for the seed and 60% uh, is parboiled. Remaining in, uh, remaining things are raw milling. So in that 60% of uh, rice, that is 60% means 120, 60 million tons of paddy has to be converted into rice. So what is the percentage of rice we have to give it to the government? So government is procuring paddy and giving it to the rice millers. So the rice millers are converting that into a complete rice in an edible form with a specification. So that specification. So if, suppose if you are all writing for the exams, FCA exams, quality control and other things, you know what is the, these are all the questions which you will be asking. And uh, what is the percentage of paddy, uh, rice you have to uh, give back to the government? So that was fixed from our side. So I was also leading for the third decade, for the three decades, I'm working on this one. So one of the institution throughout the world, and you can say, I can probably say one of the institution throughout the world, and only one institution in India is fixing the rate of how much percentage of rice has to be given to the government from the rice milling industries. That was fixed. So we fixed with based on the overall average paddy production and how much is rice recovery. So we fixed around 68% of rice has to be given back to the government. So you imagine that if there is 100 million tons of rice, 68 million tons of rice should be given back to the industry. So remaining there is 32 million tons. Out of that, you can say that 20 million tons is asked. So remaining there is another 12 million tons. So the 12 million tons of bran, imagine that. So now you would have seen that advertisements of rice oil, oil extraction. Why this bran is more important? Why this bran is more important? Because now we are all talking about millets and other things. And rice, why this bran is so important? contains enriched with oil, protein, and minerals, fiber. Whatever that uh, nutritional need, maximum is there. And when you parboil it, more of the oil is being moved to the surface. So that was a finding in 87 to 88, there was a research, we were doing it, 
what is the level of power boiling what is the requirement for soaking what is the time for soaking and what is the time for steaming these fixed these are all now if you see that all the references you will see uh, pprc uh, developed double steaming power boiling method pressure power boiling method all this uh, processing methods were preliminarily developed from our institute and this was adopted in the industries immediately so that was the level the research which was translated into economic importance of the nation so that was the value so if you see 12 million tons and that day 12 million tons of brown brand so out of this there are 23% is oil so 23% oil means if you calculate it will be around say around 6 million ton million tons of edible oil can be recovered from this one. that is the level which we have developed the technologies for public use much of a thing so out of these things which we got an indian council of agriculture research gave an award for the maintaining the value chain of rice milling industries apart from that there is a pollution there is always behind that pollution by product utilization all these things were there so we were working on the pollution control of rice milling industries now we are seeing we are not now we are seeing only the rice mills sparsely but when uh, in in uh, tanjavur district overall do you know how many rice mills are there in india no statistics huh 180 uh, 185000 rice mills are there in india out of this more concentrated of rice milling industries in madhya pradesh tamil nadu west bengal and uh, maharashtra and andhra andhra is mainly meant for raw milling but in uh, west bengal madhya pradesh and uh, up and some of the parts of maharashtra they go for the par boiling in tamil nadu also they go for the par boiling so this par boiling is a bigger issue because they soak the paddy drain the water so when the once the drained water is coming out there is lot of pollution so this to address this pollution there is some lot of environmental pollution issues were there so we tried to what are why this polluted it is we are soaking the paddy there is a leachate loss so leachate loss means it is the phenolic compounds that was this is the first finding in the world there is some phenolic leachate from the rice and it contains more of a phenolic compound what we call it as t or something like that we are now we are talking of phenolic compounds of the t is more healthy for our good for our health and maintains the body weight and things we are talking about too much of about that so one of the thing is that phenolic compounds leachate of phenolic compounds from the paddy during soaking that is the first paper and one of the authors was from tnau dr anthony raj he is a microbiologist and you can see that paper also it was uh, way back very old papers and you can see the jfst journals the next aspect was the soaked paddy is the water is very high in uh, abundant in microbial load so this microbial load has to be substantially reduced and it has to be filtered so what is the way out for filtering we cannot go for a higher tech during the time so we used the black ash from the rice milling industries to filter it and then eliminate the wastages filter and then pure water was given for irrigation system so that is the technology what so the rice milling value chain we call it so another by product is rice brokers so what is this rice brokers what we are doing do you know rice brokers how many rice milling industries are in madurai and how much rice brokers are utilized for different products any idea from madurai have you gone to selur that area jai hindupuram selur i am talking about you wherever you are going around in madurai here there is a lot of by products rice milling by products the brokens are powdered are completely size reduced filled uh, sieved and used for appalam making traditional method appalam making and apart from that murku we have a chakli which is called murku which is a 
two ingredients that is two main uh, um, food products that are developed using the rice milling brokens and uh, they they do a lot of work in madurai apart from this we know that uh, anil semia you have heard about anil semia and other many other semias all are uh, out of uh, this one. so one of my project one of my phd thesis project was development of convenience products from the rice milling industries so that is the uh, findings and which has been uh, come up in a very big way all, all these products have come up in a very big way and more of the industries are, we have uh, what in that scientific manner what we have done is fixing the standards for the floor making how it has to be so wheat milling have you heard about wheat milling rice milling or wheat milling so wheat milling we have what are the fractions we have whole wheat atta maida and uh, durum wheat string wheat lot of uh, fix, fix uh, standards for this one so more suitable for cakes whole wheat for the different products bakery products so like that there is no standards for the rice so we fixed we have like low amylose high amylose intermediate amylose so which is the most suitable amylose content which can reflect on the quality of the product so that is an value added product how to fix the quality this uh, how to test that how to clearly demark this is a low amylose or high amylose varieties and which can be used for different products and what is the cooking quality of high amylose low amylose so which one is the high amylose uh, rice any idea basmati yeah, huh? okay very good and then low amylose no rice low amylose varieties any varieties you can see whether it is available in india sticky rice we call it as sticky rice is there anything so you find out some of the sticky rice we call it as mainly few varieties from manipur and uh, northeast which is used for the fermentation of the uh, developing fermented uh, drinks from the rice that is a thing so we demarked what is the level of amylose what is the process conditions what is the variety or what is the product that can be developed out of that so one of the value chain so this one gave a clear idea clear cut idea and this has been included in the standards ba standards and fssc standards all these things so last, last uh, two years we have been setting up around 86 different standards has been set from the cereals and pulses standards alone so right from uh, 16 2016 to 23 we have developed around 86 new standards for different products these are all collection of literature doing a research on that all these things we have done it so these are all kept as a standards from the any of the industries they have to go for some labeling or uh, uh, give a demarcation for the ingredients they have to refer our standards so that is what the level of work we have done so next is you can go so i will just give a brief about our institute so our institute was started in uh, 1967 because eller called us uh, tanjavur the thiruvarur rice mill federation that was the name in 1967 which was started by dr v subramanian founder director of cftri so he started with his own money as a retirement money he started this uh, institute and it was renamed as paddy processing research center in 1972 and we shifted to 87 so that is a time when i joined the institute 87 and uh, now it is almost 23 now we have uh, gone up to the institute of national importance so why we got that importance that's what i told in the earlier uh, talk um, we should not expect uh, anything from uh, what we work but we deliver the achievements that it will be reflecting in the institute level so whatever the efforts you put in it is it may benefit you in person sometimes it may benefit the whole institute in a lot so that is a bigger way of achieving a satisfied life okay thank you next <clears throat> 
so this was uh, in uh, 2020 we have uh, uh, 19 it was placed and 2020 we got the national uh, in institute of national importance next next please next next all coming next okay this is the departments which we our institute have only there was only five departments earlier now it has been elaborated into 16 departments with service industries and other thing next so our mode of work is 30% research 30% education 20% testing and incubation consultancy service 20% skill development next next so research and innovation uh, right from uh, 2012 we have around now we have around uh, 18 international projects and uh, we got around 62 external funded projects and uh, industry project we cannot say that lot of uh, each or each uh, faculty member should have minimum four industry projects and uh, we we challenge them with different aspects with the students or different industries and uh, at at present the current uh, scenario is that we are uh, having around 120 million 120 be uh, uh, crores of rupees in our uh, kitty so these are the things which we have standardized next so this unique uh, value chain i told farm level gat gates so value chain is not only uh, giving a value to the product but we have to develop some smaller gat gates so smaller gadgets form level gadgets and uh, processing and handling gadgets like grain pumps so if you see that in the grain uh, they in the yard they dry the paddy and then uh, that has to be taken by manually so instead of that we have developed one grain pump where you can move the pump it will suck all the things and then go to the good up so that is an another bigger advantage it is also being reflected in shipping industries for the grain handling and other things so it's a remodified uh, machine suitable for the smaller industries so value added products and for boiling so this is another uh, area unique area is uh, non thermal uh, processing electro spraying freeze drying uv disinfestation and pulse cell light uh, treatment plasma processing and ultrasound and ozone and grain storage aspects bulk storage now we say procuring government is procuring paddy what is the specification for procuring the paddy so whether it has to be uh, procured at 22% moisture or at 17% moisture or at 14% moisture so this will be time to time the government policy will change but we will be giving an what is the suitable storage period and the suitable storage moisture should be there for different varieties or different pulses or different crops we fix a standard and we give it to the government so out of that we have fixed around 12 to 14% for moisture content for the paddy and when you are storing it a uh, different uh, format in a bulk storage bag storage or in a bulk storage like a bin so what is the bin or how it is moisture is transferred when it is kept in a bin it's all we copy it from the western world in canada and us they can they keep it in a very large bulk but there is a different temperature environment is different temperature complete lower temperature so that it can withstand the grains will breathe the grains will breathe and give out the heat that heat is circulated within the things so they have a circulation system and all but in our thing the grain is also breathing the outer temperature is all high so we have to control both the things if you are not controlling both the things the grains will be spoiled a discoloration of the grains will be happening so once the discoloration is there it will reflect in the power boiling drying milling everything so entire quality when you are seeing the public are complaining about they have given a discolor rise in the ration immediately there will be big uh, hue and cry so we have to correctly give them the guidance we have to guide the government to maintain how to uh, keep up the grains and what is the temperature and how we have to handle the higher temperature or higher moisture contents of the paddy where we have to give a clear cut ideas like what is the solution or what is the hurdles that is happening for the government and how to handle that hurdles all these things technologies we are giving so alternate fumigation cap storage 
and modeling and simulation. Next. So technology transferred, mobile food processing unit, grain puffing unit, and uh, Ruffins, few uh, technologies which uh, earlier uh, things. Next, please. So when we come to, not only we are not uh, settled with the grains, earlier it was PPRC, so we settled with the grains. Now we have to diversify for other crops. So another crop which we took is coconut. Uh, how we are making the coconut as a value chain. So different products can be developed and different products, how to maintain it. So next. 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 Development of intelligent packing system with antimicrobial agent for the fruits and vegetables. Development of the diversified millet products. Development of non-dairy symbiotic foods to ensure food safety and combat hidden angers. The next. <clears throat> so bio waste, utilization of bio waste from the small onions, 3D printing, integrated coconut processing and nano patterning of instant soluble uh, foaming uh, soluble coffee. So one of the major thing was uh, bio waste, small onions. Small onions are, why the small onions are more important? We, we talk about onions and the tomatoes. But what is the importance of this onions and tomatoes in our diet? It has a masking effect. Right? We are cooking non vegetarian. Non vegetarian item. item. And then it's uh, enriched with high antioxidants. Curicetin. Today morning also the uh, thesis presentation was there. In that curicetin. So curicetin, now it has come to the shampoo level. Have you seen the advertisements? I think your anti is so all this skin, the skin is waste, but that can be giving out some of the excellent antioxidants that can be used for external use. If not for the internal use, it can be used for some cosmetic industries. So when you are going for a cosmetic industries, what do you expect? I think 80% uh, are uh, ladies. When you uh, take a moisture cream or some uh, lipsticks, what do you expect from that ingredients? You have to answer this is you are going to use it every day. Moisture cream. Long lasting. Long lasting. Uh, so that one, one small moisture cream uh, will cost around from facial uh, thing which will cost you around 600 or 700. So what you, how you use it, as such you will use it or you will use it with a very, very economical manner. Okay. So when you use it with an economical manner, you have to take a pinch and then you have to see how far it is reaching. How much you are able to spread it. Right? Is it right? Okay. So that will give you an economic. So what is the performance? So what are the basic information that is going to give? One is textural property of the materials and how it is mixing emulsion property. How this emulsion property can be withstand whole of the storage of this smaller containers. So these, whether that uh, ingredient will be effective for a longer time for the storage period, they will be giving around six months, three months storage period. If you see the moisture cream or if you see the whitening cream, the, it should be easy to for you to take it out and then spread it in a longer things. So how much is the spreadability? How much it is withstanding the other uh, climatic conditions? How it has to be packed? How much it is withstanding? So all these gelling properties, all these things can be the curiosity in that uh, small onions. Skin is excellent gel, have an excellent gelling property. And more often, Anti-nutrient, antioxidant properties are there. So that is what we have given. And uh, now you have seen that it is in the shampoo also. So that is the technology level we are giving, not only for the food. If it is not suitable for the food, you have to see what is the next opportunity. So that is the way we have to calculate what is the, so making it more economic, more value chain, increase the value chain. It should be an inclusive growth for all the industries. Not only for only specific food industry, it should be an inclusive growth for all the industries 
and it also gives the farmers a very good returns compared to any other thing next please next please next <coughs> <clears throat> so this one is it's an uh, innovative uk uh, project uh, indo uk project we named it as nutrition and grain care so grain care was in line with our earlier work how we are procuring how we are storing what is the changes happening so this has to be as we age as we improve the knowledge or the sharing of the knowledge or the information should reach us in a form If you are seeing a mobile, it should reach your mobile. What is the information immediately, so that you can take an action. So one of the thing is that in the grain care, we developed a sensor with the UK company, and this sensor was placed in the storage packets in a bag storage, a bulk storage, and not only one area. We have kept in all over India. We have covered high humid regions like the northeast. and uh, dry humid region at uh, punjab and in tamil nadu where the humidity and uh, temperature is a moderate one so we are comparing all this thing in raipur all these areas we compare and we that information that is a sensor that senses the moisture and the temperature it will give back to the information to our mobile and there is a change in the moisture and the temperature immediately the insect attack will be there so we advise the storage quality control ma managers to take out re repack it or reinstall it into a different format so that the loss prevention can be made there is no need for any fumigation additional fumigation or thing these are the technologies which we have given for to the and this is under fully it is going uh, to a throat i think and apart from that we have also developed some other if there is a high moisture paddy is coming the government will ask uh, ask the uh, other agencies to procure the paddy if it is a high moisture also because we have to save the grains and we have to give the farmers a return for their work the further efforts we have to give some returns so that government will instruct uh, the agencies to procure the paddy even it is high moisture so immediately when it is high moisture we are going to reduce the moisture how it has to be reduced so we used a radio frequency dryer immediately you take the dryer and then you dry the paddy to a moisture safer moisture and then it stored so among this uh, thing we are also we are placing the sensors the sensors will give in immediately give you a feedback that this moisture is uh, the paddy is moisture content is this or so more suitable for storing or you can process the next level of processing can be advised so these are the things which we are the nutrition uh, we have spelled it wrong right right or wrong nutrition is right or wrong the spelling is right or wrong no oh, oh, you are, see it should be an interactive one so that i can come out with more ideas okay so it's a nutrition we have given a new dimension for the nutrition so a lot of industries are there have you taken chips potato chips have you taken juice you are taking this type of a juice so you are taking only the pulp of it what happens to the outer skin seed what the industries do this is then waste for them the juice they take it out pack it and then we are taking it but other by products which are getting it are more valuable in a nutritional point of view we can extract some of the nutrients which we can use it in incorporate into some of the products how many of you have taken britannia's potatoes how many of you have taken britannia's potatoes taken it okay any other uh, things like uh, nutri choice biscuits nutri choice biscuits itc biscuits all this you know you are eating whatever the waste that has been started so we are giving a new dimension potato is nothing but we have taken the you have taken the chips so preparing a chips is to remove the outer skin and take out the uh, cleaned potato slice it for frying and everything for it's a ready to eat next level of the waste what we are accumulating it it is a bigger pollution control thing problem 
so we have filtered it taken the starch dried it and it contains more of a protein compared to the potato it contain around 12% protein so what to do with this high protein low cost material it's a low cost material if you are giving for animal feed okay that is good we can give it there is no restriction but when we want we are seeing only one area of people there are high income group low income group very low some area people mid day meal programs are there if you take it in uh, africa there is no food at all what what we have to supplement so what is the best supplement we have this waste which are more nutritious dense so we are converting that and we are adding to some of the products and making it a uh, chips this was jointly done from our institute and uh, nottingham university so this has been first introduced in african countries and to bangladesh here there was a company called pron and uh, that pro uh, the company introduced the potatoes the term was potato orange color packet will be there and then it was taken out all the other bigger bakery industries so this is, so we have to make a functional ingredient that is suiting all the people okay so that's that we have uh, done this. so that is the value chain so apart from this what are the things we have done is grape waste pulses and uh, oil seed waste all these extracts you can use it for different end products so you focus on some of the say for example if you take uh, my pet project is uh, jackfruit so jackfruit when we consider jackfruit how much what are the what are the components you are going to eat in the jackfruit Hmm? Bulbs, carpels, and seeds. So, what is the percentage of this carpel and seed? The jackfruit, whole of the jackfruit. If you are, I gave a ten kg of jackfruit. So, how much will be the carpel? How much will be the seed? Totally, both are forty percent. if suppose one farmer is taking one jackfruit of 10 kgs from his village to a town he is carrying 40% edible 60% waste accept it so how to change this image how to change this one so what is the thing whether the strands are good for us or not the strands in it you would have seen that feathery thing whether it is good for us or not it's good for us or not it's good 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 so how it is good no i will be lot of i will be asking lot of questions okay so how it is be good what is it first what is it have you heard about darwin's theory of survival of fittest what is it Whoever is surviving, whoever is, they can, whoever is very strong, they can become. So like that, whoever is strong, that becomes a carpel. The other thing is a pseudo fruit. It's a pseudo fruit only. So we are taking that uh, pseudo fruits, making it as a high fiber material. You can incorporate into any of the things. So now jackfruit flour. What the technology? What I have developed is, we are taking it, we are removing the outer skin. and then slicing it cutting it drying it in a single dryer we are segregating the feathers uh, we call it as strands and the core and the carpels and the seed in a different moisture condition when it uh, dries up each one gets eliminated because of the drying low moisture so we take it out powder it we can segregate all the things you can mix up to a, form a different product we can give it so jackfruit flour out of this what we have done is <clears throat> there is a lot of components which are more suitable for reducing the adipose tissue and increasing the insulin activity so these two components are very important for our managing the double disease burden so one of the double disease burden is obesity you know so obesity along with added with diabetes so we have to reduce that both the things we have to add so one of the project was jackfruit flour which can be incorporated into different uh, things 
Next. Next. So, <clears throat> so we have developed that uh, product, and we now it is forty percent incorporation of jackfruit in the wheat flour, which will be helping to reduce the diabetic sugar control and body weight management also. That is a very big uh, hit, and it is all going on. And uh, Prime Minister himself has introduced that person, the uh, entrepreneur, and he showed what is the changes we can make out of jackfruit. Now, the figure is that 40% utilization product has increased to 70% of the product are utilized, utilizable. So we are increasing 100%, close to 100% utilization has been increased in the single fruit. So if you take in India, we are producing around 2,400 crores of worth of jackfruit. 2,400 crores worth of jackfruit alone. If you value add this one, Imagine three types. So what is the value? So this is what we have to think of value chain. Whether we can do that with uh, things, that is a major thing. Next, so mission mode projects. So these are the concept of mission mode project. So mission mode project is all of the institute work on one concept. We started with onion mission and uh, we coordinated with the Perambur Onion Producer Association. And we developed some of the missionaries. What is the basic? We have analyzed the entire value chain. Where is the lacuna? What will make them more happier to make it as an economical possible higher uh, income? So, next. so this was the inc incubation center which we have set up at Paramblur uh, Chetikulam village uh, where you can separate onion, small onions. What is the problem with the small onions? Hmm? Skin. Skin removal and then at the harvesting stage, you have to harvest the root cutting and stem cutting is there. So we developed a machine suitable for root and stem cutting and uh, it was given to the farmers. Usually what they do is one lady will be working for one bag whole day. So they get around 70 rupees, 70 to 60 rupees. Now the machine has been developed and uh, so the machine has been developed, which can handle around two bags per hour. So two bags of uh, onion, we can remove the stem and the root. So it is ready for the usage. The next thing is that we have to remove the skin. So another skin uh, removal, onion uh, things, removing uh, thing we have developed, peeler, onion peeler and curing structures. So out of this, what are the products which we have developed is vacuum packed peeled on fresh onions. Usually when you take it in any hotel industries, that is the biggest thing. So we developed this one and the uh, whole of, if you say, right from Trichy to Chennai, all the hotels are having a peeled onion vacuum packed in the refrigeration. So there is no need for the human intervention. They can use it for instantly. So the farmers are gaining at a very high level of income from this one, technology. Next is the same concept of coconut. We are done with the coconut uh, mission uh, projects, different value added products which have been developed and packaging materials. Next. Here the problem is that every time we have to depend on some people who has to claim the tree and uh, take the sap and then test weed. So we developed one of the missions for extracting the sap immediately and coming into the cold storage system. Next. So this is a machine which we have, will be fixed in the coconut tree that will do whatever the climber does in the floret. So he will uh, take it and all this uh, floret uh, liquid will be coming through that and it will get down at uh, the bottom of the tree. That will be crystallized into a different form. The crystal formation of the Nira sugar is different. So this is a project what we have done with the nutrition. So pulse, pomegranate waste, oats and apple, pomace and potato and grape waste. All these things have been done with the different products. Next. Next. The grain sensor. Next. 
ஓகே நீங்க is a machine uh, it should be a like similar to a tailoring machine or a person uh, a women can handle it this was specifically designed for the tribal people to remove the outer skin of the jackboot different compartment uh, parts of uh, jackboot and uh, next so this is a dryer conveyor dryer where all together is been mixed and then dried and then taken into different uh, formats we make it a floor depending upon our needs next so what are the components available in uh, different uh, parts of the jackpot next so different value added products from the single food like uh, ice cream cones waffles so uh, pasta and many products which we have developed with these things so edible plate Okay. <coughs> okay. So these are some of the value chain uh, products which we ought to show how much we can make or develop some of the products. So this is onion peel and onions. What we can do with uh, onion peel and onion. apart from the cosmetic industries, we can use it for different end uses. so these are all some products uh, ice creams millets i think you heard about lot of uh, things on ice cream and millet we have promoted like anything carbonated drinks 3d printing Next. okay thank you okay. so any questions you can Hmm. so now you can uh, clarify your doubts so it's a good presentation sir has highlighted all the value chain that is the food value chain how we can make the produce more profitable commercial and how the technologies can be viable so everything sir has discussed so it's now it's your time to clarify your doubts i have a system in my class <laughs> one thing is when i when i am i am handling a subject i will ask my students to take the class and how many students are attending that and how many questions are coming from the student will result in the mark of the presenting student i am a simple technique you present you present i will discuss about that for the subject but uh, the mark will be dependent upon your friends so if you want the mark you call all the friends to attend your meeting that's good so the <clears throat> you was mentioning about that uh, non thermal processing technology <coughs> under that uh, the food plasma what type of technologies that you are developing from the cold plasma ah uh, cold plasma actually we were uh, how about the commercial value so commercial value is only that is uh, meant for non edible materials the plasma treatment was sterilization was introduced and for the plasma cutting and other things but not for the food till now fda has not approved any plasma techniques any plasma treated foods for the commercial use so why we want to do this plasma what is plasma how many of you wake up by 5:30 morning 5 o'clock students 7:30 how many of you wake up in the morning early morning and before sunrise you can see a small twilight of blue color what is that 
blue color, dark blue, and it becomes slightly light blue. What is that? Every day we are watching. So we work like uh, Panja Bodhangal. What is it? Panja Bodhangal, what are the things? Nilam Katri, Agayam Nirp. So, Nirlen, water, ozone. We have created an ozone treatment for sterilizing different food products. Katri, modified atmospheric packaging. We give a different things. Apam, Nilam. What are the storage systems we have? Different storage systems we have. One is underground storage and uh, different uh, things. Cutter. Uh, what is the atmosphere we give? Near Linde Pipano, water. How will we use the water? There is a small packet of food juice. Okay. Suppose if I give a high pressure compress on it, what will happen? Bust. If you are giving a more suitable, non-bustable, but higher pressure in it, what will happen? Sonication, you know, what is sonication? Sterilization, type of sterilization disintegrating the microbial cells. Okay, so same type of it, when and uh, under high pressure with the water surrounded, it will kill the microbial. So it is a non-thermal technique. So like that, we, uh, we have the plasma. Plasma is also non-thermal technique. Early morning, we don't feel the heat, but that blue color is there. So that blue color is only nothing, but it's a plasma, which is created from the sun's reflection. So this is a very sterile condition. That is a very sterile state of thing. That is what we are all asking you to get up early and go for a meditation. <laughs> because our atmosphere will be sterile, oxygen level will be high, and your brain functions will be effective. Your thought process will be effective. Whatever you think, you can become. OK. So you have to focus on such a thing. So plasma is also one of the things where we used to sterilize. It is only meant for the surface sterilization. And we slowly developed into some system to increase the germinability of the grains. So in certain grains are very hard to germinate. Certain grains are very easy to germinate. So we are hard to germinate grains are given for a plasma treatment. And what is the water absorption characteristics? What is the changes happening? So the grains are meditating. We are giving a wake-up call to the grains to germinate itself. So that is a treatment, plasma treatment, what uh, is meant for. And apart from that, it is also, it's an atmospheric plasma. It's not in a higher level plasma. It is not in a ozone level or something like that. It is an atmospheric plasma. So atmospheric plasma is without pressure. So without pressure, we are giving a, creating an uh, electrodes using a plasma energy is being generated using a separate generator. This plasma will sterilize and change and give a free radicals on this one to also create free radicals. That is a negative thing. But we want to use this free radicals in a positive manner to give, get it down with the many things. Like if you want to uh, extract oil from the sea, you want a rate of extraction should be higher. So you give a plasma treatment, how it is generated. So what happens to the oil, whether it have a quick rancidity or you can maintain at a very high quality, that are all we are studying in basic things we are doing. Apart from that, we have done a lot of work basically on germination, water purification, plasma treated water purification. Suppose if it was developed, a system was developed for the defense people. The defense people, they cannot go and boil the water. If there is smoke is there in the water areas, the enemies will attack. So that we want some sterilized water, which will generate certain uh, things and which will not generate a smoke. And there should not be any trace of uh, 
burning days. So a small GAD grid with a plasma generator, where wherever whichever water is there, the water may be they cannot carry all the water. They have to get the water from different areas. Whatever the quality is there, so that has to be sterilized. So that type of a sterilizer has been developed. So this is uh, still it has not been approved because FDA has not approved the plasma treatment. So we are not given, but it's only tested for preparation of some other alternate materials and other things. Thank you. Any questions? Your work on actual fortification of rice. Hmm. <coughs> what you've done. I mean, it was way back in uh, 91, 92, which uh, vermicelli. Yeah. vermicelli is there. So, vermicelli was generally coming out of Maida. So, we used Maida or Suji for making uh, traditional vermicelli. So, I want to incorporate some of the things like fruits, beta carotene enriched uh, fruits. Pulp is taken. Instead of water, we are adding this on. And then further, we, which we have, uh, during that time only, it was started that uh, uh, fortification of rice was started. So we can reshape that into a different format. And now it has come up as a fortified rice has to be supplemented to the population. So one of the pioneer work on that aspect is this one. We added with the uh, fruits and then a uh, few more uh, materials and then we try to soak the grains in uh, high uh, nutrient rich uh, soap water like uh, infusing the nutrients beta carotene and other things while soaking itself we developed that with the uh, university of new south wales and uh, ourselves we developed that uh, technology for soaking and incorporating the fortified uh, nutrients in the rice so brown rice was fortified and dried in a controlled condition and then uh, polished so that there is no difference between the regular rice and uh, fortified rice or re-engineered rice so it will be different one so any other questions so you were talking about the jack <coughs> is it out of school jack from the cell or from the right if you don't want to eat, you can make it through the ring. I'm asking, is it from only made out of You have short yeah. Uh, yeah, because of the, the ring quality is differs from different uh, varieties of fruits. So some of the rings will give be more bitter taste and we cannot eat it. So that type of uh, fruit, we can use it as a use and throw, biodegradable plates or uh, whatever the format. Some of the fruits uh, rind are very tasty. Even the fruits are very tasty. You can say that that type of uh, thing, we take it and they use it for edible cups. And so depending upon, for example, if you say in uh, Bandro tea and uh, Pudukote area, the fruits are very hard. And if you go to Kodekanal and uh, the eastern side, the fruits are very uh, soggy. It becomes very jelly when it's opened. Within three hours, it gets spoiled. But in uh, Pantoti and other day, it can be stored for one day in an open uh, thing. If you keep it in refrigerator, it will become like a, it will become like soggy. So because of the enzyme activity. So that enzyme activity has to be reduced. So either you go for a blanching and then keep it uh, straight for uh, further processing. And uh, we can uh, either we have to blast freeze it like a chicken, blast freeze it, keep it in a cold stove. There's an alternate, next alternate. See, you said it is having some bitter taste. Whether it is that toxic. <coughs> Which one? See, the rind. rind Sometimes uh, it is more bitter. Uh, Whether there is any parameter or indicator to be checked for the bitterness. That's a this, uh, biodiversity decides. Some of the biodiversity components are... Most of, the, mm, most of the things are... Uh, where the atmospheric so trees and uh, plants have a character. Some are irrigated, some get the moisture, required moisture from the atmosphere itself. So those fruits which are like Vayanad area, Idiki, other things, they get a moisture from the atmosphere. 
and uh, if you go, go down no, towards just the i'm asking whether you analyze the parameters there is some the, that parameters are there madam the based on that uh, thing only we have decided you are telling that it can be used to and uh, use and throw type use and throw but even if you put some uh, material food material or anything hard or anything warm in that plate there may be chances for the migration of yeah. uh, bitterness that don't be there don't be any chance because when we are making it on a very hot uh, plate it is like an end end of the story so we put it in a uh, compressed uh, heat compressed material so it gets hardened and it is like killing all the tissues and other things so if it is overcooked only we will get a caramelized smell but nothing nothing will happen it won't migrate to the food material variety also variety also we can also use it for an ice cream also they are using it yeah that okay okay you know questions it is the parimala ma'am please okay madam thank you thank you all students patiently hearing after the good lunch but i am i had good lunch but i don't know everybody <laughs> Yes, no, no, the hostel. I, I, I usually. No, actually, my classes are on uh, Tuesday afternoon by uh, two to two fifty, and uh, Thursday afternoon two to two two. So I ask my students to present, and I will take rest. Thank you. That's an ideal time to sleep. Okay. So good afternoon, and. of course uh, at this point of time i would like to thank uh, dr jagan mohan sir for his very thoughtful lecture i would say it as a more of a research he has intervened into that particular topic uh, rather than just talking about what was value chain and other things and uh, many of the things Uh, any guest lecturer or any lecturer who is standing over here needs the audience response so which we just only realize only when we go to the masters level so at that point of time i think uh, all of us would appreciate uh, the audience to react to the speaker so with this small request i would just move on to the formal vote of thanks so um so at this juncture we would like to thank the dean school of postgraduate studies who has been uh, initiating this program of uh, combining the uh, guest lecture topic with that of the uh, external examiner usually earlier days we had only the external examiner and he comes and visits and it is only for a small forum who has attended the viva we know what is he where is he what is his area of work but now the university has taken a decision that the examiner needs to be capitalized on his knowledge and his experience so that the students of tnau get enlightened about this material about his research topic so at this point i would like to just thank the school uh, of uh, postgraduate studies dean and also the dean of community science college for having brought in uh, the person from the nifcom to enlighten us on this aspect so the topic that was given today was on value chain but sir has just uh, touched upon the role of uh, nifcom on what are the areas they work on it and how it is being relative to the society and what is the level of research thought that can be thought about by the scientists and by the students of our own faculty and thank you sir for this opportunity and it was a very nice lecture i do not know about others but uh, really i enjoyed your lecture so that is one thing uh, i would like to thank and also i would like to thank all the teachers uh, all my colleagues and all the doctoral and research students and most probably the undergraduate students who know what is maximum utilization of time at this point of day so thank you all for your patient listening thank you